Okay, so I'm bringing in a much more dramatic reference here. Lighting direction matters. I need to keep the lighting on top, so I'm going to use this as kind of the back of my creature. And I'm thinking of using these shadows as kind of the, the underside of my creature. Right? So, what's the first thing I can do? Well, just like we've learned in compositing, I'm going to use a 100% soft eraser and get rid of those hard edges. That's helpful for almost everything, but especially when compositing landscapes and clouds, those hard edges just get in the way. It's all about atmosphere. And my stylus at 100% can make short work of that. Then before I even place it, I want to be able to compare it. So I'm going to start playing with what I think are the most useful tools and often least utilized, the direct adjustments, which will affect every pixel in that layer. So first, levels. I'm going to brighten my midtones, right? I'm going to limit my shadows. And now that's when I squint, even though it's gray instead of colored, I can see that those values, that's still quite dark, which I want, but they're more consistent, right? So levels made a big difference. Now that the levels are taken care of, I can go to color balance and I can try to bring in some of that color, the cyan, the yellow. So I use this reference on purpose to show you how powerful these tools are to match. So we are not limited by the color of our reference. We are able to change it. All right, so I like that. Now I can move it where I think it needs to be. where I think it's most useful, and then I can start erasing away from it. And when I'm ready, I'm going to start doing soft erasing at lower opacities and ghosting a little bit, working from the edge, letting it dissolve slowly and bite away. Very helpful to use a stylus for this. You see how that shadow now carries it forward. And because I'm only erasing at 31% opacity, it leaves a little bit of it behind, this darker cloud. It's not all or nothing. So if there's any one thing about rastered images, it's that it's all about layers. So many layers. I can kind of warp it. Stretch it out a little. I can even play with its overall opacity with the layer setting. Instead of erasing it, I can just take down its overall opacity a little bit. And then if I really need to get rid of something, I can use the magic wand and then erase from there. because your selections can be used as a mask as well, as kind of a stencil. Then I might need to blur it or smudge it. I'll use the blur tool. Then I'll use the smudge tool. It does take a while to process. But these are the compositing standbys, just bringing in new layers, softening their edges, erasing them in. Remember, it's like blowing out candles, a little puff with the smudge tool. And I can go to the layers I see behind and soften them by smudging them out, little puff. 
Now, a way to travel around your image, notice I have the navigator open so I can see it from a distance, but I can also just hold down spacebar, and no matter what tool I'm using, that will show me, or it will allow me to move around my image. Just click and drag. Very helpful. All right, let's see what we've got. Now, if we layer these things up. So I'm liking this, all that works. I have some hard edges, I have some soft edges. I need to work on the other side now, the other wing. Come on, catch up with me. So as the computer starts to lag a little bit, I wanna make sure I save. Remember these smudge tools and blur tools can take a toll. Let's see. Okay, let's save it. Now let's find another cloud to bring in. Now we are really, really transforming this reference, you know, using it for our own purposes. So I can use any part of a cloud I want. I think I'm going to use this same one again, though. Or maybe this. Maybe I'll use this. So you can use clouds in multiple ways, but I, I'm going to use these kind of wispy ones off to the edge here. or the tip of my wing. Actually, this one looks really good. So remember, as long as the lighting makes sense, you can transform these. So I'm gonna flip it, flip it horizontally, tilt it a little bit, as long as the lighting makes sense. I'm gonna grow it. Now I want it to match the color. Its lighting, its levels are pretty much matching already. And this cloud is co closer, so as an indication, I can kind of use the sky behind it. The way of helping it to match. Then I can use my magic wand. With contiguous unchecked, I can click on all the blues around it, all the sky. I can hold down shift, get multiple levels of it, but that's too much. Then I can soften that selection with select and mask. It remembers my settings. I'm feathering. Say OK. Then I delete and soften as I go. Deselect, and now I use my eraser at 100% opacity, but very soft. Knock back some of these edges that aren't as helpful, revealing the cloud underneath. especially the hard edges from my selection. Often when I bring in a new layer, I'll put it on top of everything so I don't leave any hard edges by mistake. But then, of course, when dealing with layers, you can sync them in. You can decide, okay, well, how, how deep should it be? So 
So I'm going to now take down my opacity a little bit on my eraser to about 30. Start knocking these down. Then I'm going to stretch it a little bit. And then before I go too much further, I'm going to push it down through the layers. There we go. And then I know to erase from behind it. And I can also treat other things I see. So the layer I'm working on is now this layer. Sometimes I'll give it a color so I know. And then after this, after I've kind of composited things in and erased away, color corrected, I've got my shape. Then I'm going to finish it off just like we did our, with our creature with clone stamp. So let me freely break it up here, these clouds. And you decide whether you need to erase, whether you need to blur, whether you need to smudge, whatever it takes to make them believable. If you smudge like I'm doing here, just do it a little bit at a time. And let the computer catch up with you. And it will soften the edge as it does it, which is why it's such a useful tool. To be honest, because I don't do like um, digital pastel paintings, when I do digital painting, it's usually like a digital watercolor, a digital oil painting, something like that. I don't use smudge a whole lot. I don't actually like that look, but for this project, it's very helpful. And why we do this project at this point in the semester is my hope is that it will make digital painting less intimidating. Because in so many ways, we are just painting with cloud texture. We're using all the same skills. All right. So now am I suggesting that wing in a way that I like? If I think it's maybe a little too sharp, I can just go to Gaussian Blur and set it not so high. <laughs> Start at zero, and then just push it a little bit. And then I'll see. Does the Gaussian blur help? Yes. It's subtle, but it's helpful. And I can, if I think I need it more than once, I can do it again. Yes. And now all of that looks like one layer. Now where there are little sharp edges still, I find the layer they belong to. And I use my various methods to control the edge. I use smudge a little bit, I use erase. Whatever is necessary. If you're on a layer and it doesn't seem to be having any effect, check what layer you're on, check your tool. You're affecting something. It might just not be the layer you want it to affect. So clone stamp we can use to paint on top of everything and steal from everything. And so maybe that would be a good way for me to